today's scripture is found in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. They went across the lake to the region of Gerasene. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained, hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus has said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again not to send him out of the area. A large herd of pigs were feeding in the nearby hills. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd was about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had, demon, had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went his way and began to tell the Decapolis, how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. The reading of God's word. Okay, so this is a very disturbing situation. We have a man who is being tied up in a cemetery. Okay, he is yelling all day, all night, and he's cutting himself with stones. As you can imagine, this would create a lot of disturbance in the neighborhood and probably a lot of fear from the people who tried to tie him up in the first place. But it wasn't him who was doing it. It was a demonic force that had been taking over him and torturing him and controlling all of his actions. And it was also torturing those around him. This is kind of scary to think of living in a neighborhood where this could be happening. For some of our church members though, this is a reality and they live in neighborhoods where there is a lot of fear, a lot of disturbance, yelling, and people hurting themselves and others. Now let's make something clear. Just because someone is yelling in a disturbed fashion, or if they're cutting themselves, or if they are making their neighborhood unpeaceful, it doesn't mean that they are demon possessed. For too long throughout the history of the church, there has been an equation between demon possession and mental health challenges. And I just want to make it clear that these two do not always equate. I want to make it clear that having mental health challenges doesn't mean demon possession. Mental health challenges is basically chemical brain imbalance and that's something that we are born with it is physical it is something that our environment and our situations create whereas demon possession is something much less controllable than a mental health challenge here's the good news 
Jesus showed his power over that demon-possessed man and drove all the demons out. So much so that this man was filled with so much gratitude. And by the time Jesus was leaving, this man wanted to go and follow him and just be part of his disciples. But Jesus was like, no, 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 go back to your people, go back to the neighborhood that you were once disturbing. And instead, why don't you go and tell them your story? Why don't you go and tell them of all the things that God has done for you? Why don't you go and tell them of how God has transformed your life? Jesus came so that he could live the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died so that he can destroy the works of the enemy, the devil. And so that through his death, and through his resurrection, and through his second coming, Jesus can redeem this world completely. So whatever fears or challenges you may be experiencing, just know that Jesus is more powerful than them. And one day, those challenges and those fears will completely be gone. When we are with him in the new Jerusalem, Everything will be redeemed, everything will be healed, everything will be clean, everything will be made complete. Let's continue to get ready for that day when all things will be complete, defeated, and put under the feet of Jesus.